Indeed, how good it is to be together once again. Large numbers gathered here in the Abraham Swerdlow Sanctuary. Large numbers gathered on, la on live stream as well. What a blessing it is to be together. So the question, what is the blessing that one says when we haven't seen someone for a while? And a lesson in the Talmud teaches the following. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi said, one who sees his friend after 30 days have passed since the last seeing him, recites Shehechianu, blessed be God who has given us life, sustained us, and brought us to this time. One who sees his friend after 12 months, recites Michaye Metim, who gives life to the dead. Blessed be God who revives the dead. As Rav said, a dead person is only forgotten from the heart after 12 months have passed. As it is stated in Psalms, I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a lost vessel. It may seem strange to recite Michaye Metim, who gives life to the dead, but there is something really powerful about this moment of renewal. For some of you here today, it's the first time that you've been inside the building or in the sanctuary since our 2019 High Holy Days. We are experiencing a revival and a return to life which is a little more typical, not completely, not complete to normal, but a little more typical today than it was at this time last year and certainly two years ago. So hine matov. It is good to be together, especially with all of you here in the sanctuary. Your presence enlivens us. It fills us with joy. And again, we extend a special welcome to those joining from near and far on our live stream. Please put a shana tova greeting in the chat box so that we know that you are here. So a few notes. We are grateful for the large number of folks who contribute their time, talent, and treasure to our congregation, all of whom help maintain our vitality. Many individuals, couples, and groups will be honored with honors and aliyot through the course of today and the rest of these High Holy Days. In advance, we thank you for the many gifts that you give to our congregation. We're grateful for our choir to be here in full, to be lifting us up with your beautiful music, and thank you for adding so much um, presence and power to our worship today. For those who are here in person, please journey through our mock zor, through our High Holy Days prayer book at your own pace. Our services are intended to be a bit shorter in past years, so if we skip something that is typically one of your favorite parts, return to it. Go over it on your own. Just take your time and wander through it. We'll always let you know exactly where we are. For those who are watching on live stream, I hope that you were able to pick up a copy of Mishkan HaNefesh, the Maxor uh, ahead of time. Uh, we won't be displaying the prayer book on the screen this year so that we can have the fullness of our bima. Um, if you do need a copy of the Maxor, you can still get one online. Just type in Mishkan Hanefesh and you can get a, um, a Kindle version of it. So once again, thank you for joining us and celebrating 5783 here in person or at home, wherever you are. It is so good to be together. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Our service begins on page 109. Page 109. It's my pleasure to invite Rachel Smolin to lead us with our first reading. I have awakened again, and I give thanks. Before me, the blessing of this day a feast of choices and possibilities. And the breath within me says, great is your faithfulness. You offer me another chance. You offer me life. This day I am created to create this day. And on page 111, I'd like to invite Mary and John Stevens.
Matavu, how good they are, these tents of Jacob. How beautiful the homes where Israel dwells. And, and blessed, blessed are we all for who, who have, have a home when so, so many yearn for shelter and for care. care. And blessed are we who share this house, which shelters us where we belong. This the house of the Torah, Torah, this, this house, house of love, of sacred assembly and communal strength. In small and humble rooms, in splendid sanctuaries, today our people greet the turning of the year. We stand, we stand with all of them this morning, grateful we are alive to meet this, this day, first dawning, dawning of the year. For all of us, no matter where we've traveled, come back to celebrate the season of return. Give, give praise to this morning, give, give thanks for our gathering, give, give ear to the ancient call that brings us home. Our hearts rise up in hope, our spirits reach for new beginnings, our voices to lift up a melody that celebrates today. How good they are, these tents of Jacob, how beautiful the homes where Israel dwells. Continue on page 132 with Ashray. When we invite people to stand, we know that for some standing on the feet is easy. We know that for some it is hard. 
but still one can bring their full presence even by seated as we turn the ark and face God. So know that when I ask you to please rise, please do what is ever most comfortable for you. We continue on page 142 with Baruch Hu. Please rise. Page 145, it's my pleasure to invite Barbara Elson. Hello, sun in my face. Hello, you who make the morning and spread it over the fields and into the faces of the tulips and the nodding morning glories and into the windows of even the miserable and the crotchety best preacher that ever was, dear star that just happens to be where you are in the universe to keep us from ever darkness, to ease us with warm touching, to hold us in the great hands of light. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Watch now how I start the day in happiness and in kindness. Baruch Ata Adonai Yotzer HaMe'orot our praise to you, Adonai, creator of the cosmic lights. Let's join together on pages 146 and 147 in the English translation at the bottom of the page. Together, love abundant, love unstinting, our God, you have enfolded us in love. Tender compassion beyond all bounds, your precious gift. Our fathers and mothers gave you their trust, and you gave them Torah, laws by which to live. For their sake, teach us as well. Grace us with your guidance. Loving Father, merciful Mother of us all, grant us clear understanding that we may listen, learn, and teach, preserve, practice, and fulfill with love every lesson of your Torah. May learning your Torah light up our eyes. May our hearts embrace your mitzvot. Unite us in love and reverence for you that we may never feel ashamed of our deeds. We have trusted in your great and holy name. Now let us celebrate the last joy of your salvation. Bring us in peace from the four corners of the earth. Lead us with upright pride to the land that is ours. For you are a God of miracles and wonders. From all the peoples of the earth, you sought us out and brought us near to your great and enduring truth. So, so with, with love, love we acknowledge, acknowledge and proclaim and that you are one. Baruch Ata Adonai, Habocher Be'amo Yisrael Be'ahava. Please be seated. So we continue on page 152. I'd like to invite Samantha Tyler and Rachel Tyler. Tabah, 
Aham, Vishiptecha Abavetecha, Uvlechtecha Haderech, Uvshachbecha Ukumecha, Uvshartam Leoh. And on page 159, I'd like to invite Dan and Karen Serkin. I try to walk the road of Judaism. Embedded in the road, there are many jewels. One is marked Sabbath, one civil rights, and one kashrut, and one honor your parents, and one study of Torah, and one you shall be holy. There are at least 613 of them, and they are of different shapes, sizes, and weights. Some are light and easy for me to pick up, and I pick them up. Some are too deeply embedded for me. So far, so far at least, though, I get a little stronger by trying to extradate the jewels as I walk the street. Some, perhaps, I shall never be able to pick up. I believe that God expects me to keep on walking Judaism Street and to carry away whatever I can of its commandments. I do not believe that God expects me to live, lift what I cannot, nor may I condemn my fellow Jews who may not be able to pick up even as much as I can. on page 161. The Israelites walked into the Reed Sea, one foot at a time. What were they thinking about as the water rose up their legs, chilling their hearts, advancing towards their open mouths? We continue to walk here, now, one foot at a time on our better days, forward. Alone, I cannot reach the far shore without drowning. Somehow, I don't go under. The person to my right holds me up. Something I cannot see holds him up. Blessed is the source of help so often unexpected. I step forward. The sea is vast. We join together in the words of Micha Mocha. Shimcha, Asfatayam, 
Yachad kulam hodu Vim li chuve amaru On page 166, we prepare for Had Tefillah, the prayer, as we stand before God. Prayer is a step on which we rise from the self we are to the self we wish to be. Prayer affirms the hope that no reality can crush, the aspiration that can never acknowledge defeat. Make every effort to pray from the heart. Even if you do not succeed, the effort is precious in the eyes of the Eternal One. We rise together in just a moment on our feet or in our hearts as a one community, joining together in Ha Tefillah, the prayer. Please rise. Adonai Eloheinu Elohe Avotenu Vimotenu Elohe Abraham Elohe Yitzchak Elohe Yaakov Elohe Sarah Elohe Rivka Elohe Rachel Elohe Leah Ha'el Hagadol Hagibor Bahanara Shia 
Yahum again, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magin Avraham, Bezrat Sarah, Atagi Borle Alam Adonai, Mechaye Hakol Ata Rav Lehoshia, Morid Hata, Mechakel Chaim Bechesed, Mechaye Hakol Berachamim Rabim, so mech no flim, vero fecholim, umatir asurim, umekayem amunato, lishene afar. Micha mocha bagevurot, umidomelach, melech me mi. Please be seated. On page 174, we now come to one of the more challenging pieces of High Holy Day liturgy, Unatana Tokef, both familiar with its words and foreign with its theology. Do we believe in a God who chooses who will live and who will die? Is God a puppet master pulling on the strings of our lives? What we do know, however, is that this day is filled with sacred power and it is full of dread. Unitana Tokef forces us to confront death, even at this moment of rebirth and renewal. Rabbi David Wolpe suggests that, quote, by facing death, we are spurred to life. The year to come will bring death. That is the inescapable certainty of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. We know that the year ahead will bring tragedies to bear. The question which each of us must answer, Wolpe asks, is simply this. Knowing that next year will bring death, will we fill our days with the force, the promise, and the power of life? Let's join together, page 174. And so let these words of sanctity ascend to you, for you are our God and sovereign. Let us proclaim the power of this day, a day whose holiness awakens deepest awe and inspires highest praise for your dominion. For your throne is a throne of love, your reign is a reign of truth. In truth you are judge and plaintiff, counselor and witness, you inscribe and seal, you record and recount, you remember all that we have forgotten, and when you open the book of memories, it speaks for itself, for every human hand leaves its mark, an imprint like no other. The next page, 176, and so a great shofar will cry, Tekiah, a still small voice will be heard, Angels in a whirl of fear and trembling will say, Behold the day of judgment, for they too are judged. In your eyes, even they are not blameless. All who come into the world pass before you, like sheep before their shepherd, as a shepherd considers the flock. When it passes beneath the staff, you count and consider every life. You set bounds, you decide destiny you inscribe judgments.
kitzo, umi love kitzo. Page 179. On Rosh Hashanah, we plunge like swimmers into a sea of words. On Yom Kippur, the sea rises, then crests, and we emerge, sealed by the wax, warmed by the fire of braided candle. The new year is like a trailhead opening wide before us, the day of fasting, narrow, breathless, so quick to close. We contemplate a new year, and this we know. Some of us will live and some of us will die. Some will die young and some very old. Some by water and some by fire. Some by sword and some by beast. Some by hunger and some by thirst. Some by plague and some by earthquake. Some by stoning and some by strangling. Some of us will feel at ease. Some will be restless. Some will have peace of mind. Some will have strife. Some will be tranquil, some will be tormented. Some will be raised high, some will be brought low. Some will have riches, some will be impoverished. Even so, the way we act, the way we speak, the way we meet God's image in ourselves and in others, these things have great power to make our lives matter. Therefore, let us make whole the broken shards, green and thick the withering grass, let the wind fill us with urgency for life. Let dreams give birth to justice and goodness. God of holiness, God of truth, let us glimpse your truth as we attach our hope to yours. Page 180. You are everything that we praise you for, slow to anger, quick to forgive. You do not wish the death of sinners, but urge them to return from their ways and live. Until the day of death, you wait for them. You accept them at once if they return. Since you created us, you know our impulses. We are but flesh and blood. 
182, we who are mortal, our origin is dust and so is our end. We wear out our lives to get our bread like broken vessels, like withered grass, like a flower that must fade, a shadow moving on, a cloud passing by, mere dust on the wind, a dream that flies away. But for you, ever-living sovereign, time has no limits. Your presence, unbounded by days and years, is everywhere, a glorious mystery none can decipher. Your name is worthy of you, and you are worthy of your name, and our name you have linked with yours. Please turn to page 184 and please rise for the Kiddushah. Nikadesh, 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 at Shim Chabalam, Nikadesh, at Shim Chabalam, Kemajem Jemak Dishim, Otsu Bishme. Kaka tu vayat nevi echa bikaraze elze veyamar kadosh 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 aranai tzivod melochul haaretz kevodo. Adir, Adir, Adirinu, Adir, Adirinu, Adonai, Adonai, Adoneinu, Madir, Madir, Shimcha. Oh! 
Please be seated. We continue on page 186. And so, in your holiness, give all creation the gift of awe. Turn our fear to reverence. Let us be witnesses of wonder, perceiving all nature as a prayer come alive. We bow to the sovereignty of your strength, the primacy of your power. We yearn for connection with all that lives, doing your will with wholeness of heart. Awe-inspiring is your creation, all-encompassing your transcendent name. Page 188. And so in your holiness give your poor the gift of honor. Bless with praise those who praise you. Bless with hope those who seek you. Give your believers a basis for faith, true happiness for the land of Israel, true joy in Jerusalem. May the sparks of David, your servant, soon grow bright enough for us to see a beam of light in the darkness, a promise in perfection. And I will ask us to join together in the English on both page 190 and 192. Together we say, and so in your holiness, give the righteous the gift of a vision bright with joy, a world where evil has no voice, and the rule of malevolence fades like wisps of smoke. Good people everywhere will celebrate the stunning sight of arrogance gone from the earth. You and you alone, Adonai, will reign over creation upon Mount Zion, home of your presence, and in Jerusalem, a city set apart by you. As the psalmist believed, Adonai will reign eternally your God, Zion, for all generations. Hallelujah. You are holy, your name is awe. There is nothing divine beyond you. As the prophet Isaiah taught, the source of all might is exalted through justice, the God of holiness made holy through righteousness. Baruch Ata Adonai, HaMelech HaKadosh. It is my pleasure now to call upon Essie and Bob Cherkin to lead us in our next reading. This people's true history is a history of encounters with God. It has this history for its own sake and for the sake of humanity. It bears it and is born by it. Every pe people is a question which God addresses to humanity, and every people from its own place with its special talents and possibilities must answer for its own sake and for the sake of humanity. We continue on page 198. Meloch, al kol haolam kulo bichvodecha. God who is ours and God of our fathers and mothers, in your glory reign over the infinite expanse of time and space. Vehofa bechadar geon uzecha. In your grandeur be exalted. Through your power show us your reality. Then all who dwell on earth shall understand that you are their maker. Vayomer kol asher nishma be'apo, Adonai Elohei Yisrael melech, v'malchuto bechol mashallah. Astound us with the beauty of your presence, so that every breath of life shall say, Eternal is the God of Israel all embracing God's rule and sovereignty. We now take a few moments for silent prayer.
Continue now on page 222 with Avinu Malkenu, Almighty and Merciful. I'd like to invite Neil and Dara Dayan to come and open the ark, but everyone else to please rise. Loving Father, infinite power, gentle, forgiving, lofty, inscrutable, Avinu Malkenu. Compassionate Mother, omnipotent Lord, comforting presence, fathomless mystery, Avinu Malkenu. Our rock and redeemer, life of the universe, close to us always, impossibly far, Avinu Malkenu. Embracing, confounding, accepting our frailty, decreeing our end, Avinu Malkenu. None of these are true, none of them are you, yet we stand as those before us have stood, summoned to judgment, longing for love, Avinu Malkenu. May these words be a bridge they come from our hearts, and may they lead us to you. Avinu Malkinu, Shema Koleinu. Avinu Malkinu, Khatanu Lefanecha. Avinu Malkinu, Chumol Aleinu. Leol Aleinu, Vetapeinu.
We continue now on pages 226 and 227 with Seder Kiryat Torah, our service for the reading of Torah. In Kamocha, Elohim Adonai, the In Kemasecha, Malchut Echa, Malchut, Kol Alamim, Umem Shot Echa, Bechol Dor, Vador, Adonai, Melech, Adonai, 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 El Rachum Vechanun, Erech Apaim Verav Chesed Veemet, Notzer Chesed La Alafim, Nose Avon Vafesha, Vechata Avinake. Adonai, Adonai, God compassionate, gracious, endlessly patient, loving, and true, showing mercy to the thousandth generation, forgiving evil, defiance, and wrongdoing granting pardon. You may be seated. So this morning, we'll be reading from Akedat Yitzchak, the story of the binding of Isaac, which comes from Genesis chapter 22. You'll be able to follow along in the Hebrew and the English translation uh, beginning on page 240. We are pleased that we're able to have some of our 
teens who became the mitzvah in recent years to help lead us in the chanting of Torah. And this is also a wonderful opportunity to honor as a group, in some cases large groups, uh, many folks who have contributed to the life and vitality of our congregation. So our first Torah chanter is going to be Ben Richland. Where's Ben? Hmm? There's Ben. <laughs> so as Ben is coming up, you might have to make your way through the crowd, Ben. Uh, perhaps our biggest signature event this past year, sort of coming out of sort of a lot of the isolation and distance, was our Purim celebration. Not only um, what we did for the night of uh, the Purim Carnival and um, and for the adult Purim spiel, but also this great project of uh, baking uh, Mishloch Manot, the Hamantashen led by Eve and Larry Lefkowitz, and the assembly and the delivery of the Mishloch Manot that was led by Natalie Cohen and by Donna DeSantis and by dozens upon dozens of people who helped to bake for, for Purim. And not to mention a new project that Stephanie Kravitz has started this year, which is uh, having a number of folks help bake um, fresh baked goods for, uh, for the Onik Shabbat. Uh, so we were kind of moving away from the store-bought things and having more baked goods. So um, we thought that it would be better to do the, um, the Mishlach Manot, the baking and the Oneg um, Aliyah on Rosh Hashanah rather than Yom Kippur, which was my original first thought, but <laughs> luckily I saw the wisdom of that. So for the first Aliyah, a large Aliyah, I'd like to invite all of those who have uh, helped with the Mishlach Manot, the Hamantashen, and our Oneg bakers. Ya Amdu la Aliyah la Torah. Please all come up. <laughs> Vash came Abraham, Baboker, the Zoche, the Shamush, Et Hamaru, Elayokah, Et Shene, Narav, Ito, Vaya Yitzhak, Veno, Vayivcha, Arze, Ela. By <laughs> Vayomer Raham, 
The next Aliyah, I'd like to invite our Torah chanter, Asher Machalis. We're on verse 6. And for the second Aliyah, we'd like to invite the leadership of women of Shira Me and Men's Club, uh, two of our auxiliary groups who help to uh, maintain many of the community and social connections here at Shira Me. Where's Men's Club? <laughs> Did you guys get the memo? <laughs> Sent out the memo. <laughs> Any of our men's club leadership here? <laughs> David's just represented. David's represented. Here's David. I thought I said, okay. No, all right, there you go. Hey, David. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leilambahed. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher bacharbanu miko ha'amim, v'natam lanu et torato, baruch atah Adonai, notein ha'torah. Ruchat Nayam, Eloheinu Melech Alam, Asher Natan Lanu to Rod and Met, Bechaye Olam Natan Bechaheinu, Baruchat Nay, Natan Hato Ra. And for our third aliyah, our Torah chanter will be our rabbinic scholar emerita, Rabbi Paula Goldberg. It's never easy when you have to say goodbye to a beloved staff member and bring in a new beloved staff member and go through a search 
We had to do that this past year when we bid farewell to Sherry beck Naiman, our longtime ELC director, and we brought in Missy Haro, who in just a short time has done great things with our, um, with our ELC, with our preschool. And so it's a pleasure to invite the members of the ELC search committee to join us on the BIMA for the third Aliyah. Ta'amdu la Aliyah la Torah. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Atat Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim V'natan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Atat Adonai Notein HaTorah Amen. Vaishlach Avraham et Yado, Vaikach et Hamachelet, Lishkot et Bino, Vaikra Elav, Malach Adonai min Hashemayim, Vayomer Avraham, Avraham, Vayomer Hineni, Vayomer. Al tishlach yadacha el hanar ve al taaslo meuma ki ata yadati ki re elohim ata velo chasachta et bidcha et yechidcha mimeni vayisavraham. Et a nav vayar vihine vayar vihine ayl achar ne echaz bas vach bekarnav vayelech avraham vayikach et ha ayl vayalehu leola tachat beno. Vaikra Avraham Shem Hamakom Hahu Adonai Yir Eh Asher Ye Amar Hayom Behar Adonai Ye Ra Eh Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher natan lanu Torah emet, v'chaye olam atah b'tochinu, Baruch atah Adonai, notin ha'torah. Shakoach to all of our Torah chanters and all of our aliyot. And once again, thank you very much for your many contributions to Shira Me. Ya'amdu hamagbe abahago lelet. For the honor of lifting and dressing the Torah, I'd like to invite to the bima Eric Kolbrenner and Beth McAleese. Please rise. Lie, 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 lie,
On page 274, the prayer for Israel. Avinu Sheba Shamayim, Sor Yisrael Vagoalo, Barechad Mininat Yisrael, Reshit Smicha Geula Tenu. Avinu, you who are high above all nation states and peoples, Rock of Israel, the one who has saved us and preserved us in life. Bless the state of Israel, first flowering of our redemption. Be her loving shield, a shelter of lasting peace. Please join with me. Guide her leaders and advisors by your light of truth. Instruct them with your good counsel. Strengthen the hands of those who build and protect our holy land. Deliver them from danger. Crown their efforts with success. Grant peace to the land, lasting joy to all of her people. And together we say, Amen. It is my honor to invite up Allison Safer and Janice Berger to help us open the ark. Please be seated. Shana Tova. Tova. This is a story about a mother named Hagar and her son Ishmael, who, through no fault of their own, were alienated and cast out of their home. She was the maidservant to the wife of a wealthy couple, Abraham and Sarah. They were childless and desperately wanted a child. Sarah suggested to Abraham that he take Hagar, Sarah's maidservant, and father a child with her. Hagar gave birth to Ishmael, and he grew up in the house of this wealthy couple. 
But there was tension between Sarah and Hagar, who was mistreated so badly by Sarah that she ran away. With some assurances from an angel of God, Hagar chose to return. Many years later, Sarah became pregnant and gave birth to a son, Yitzchak, Isaac. Shortly thereafter, Sarah felt threatened by Hagar and Ishmael. She did not want Ishmael to have a share of their inheritance. So she told Avraham, Abraham, to throw them out of the house into a harsh and unforgiving desert environment. With the clothes on their back and some food and water, they would have to survive on their own. The situation got very dire. Hagar and Ishmael ran out of water and were close to death. Hagar, in her anguish, called out to God and cried. God heard her cries and the voice of the boy as well. God then opened her eyes and pointed her to a well not too far away that would quench their thirst and return them to strength. And God promised always to be with them. This very difficult and morally challenging story is the traditional Torah reading for the first day of Rosh Hashanah in congregations that have two full services. And it offers many themes worthy of exploration. One is alienation. Hagar, the name of Sarah's maidservant, comes from the Hebrew word for isolation or stranger. She was an outsider, a stranger in her home, who was eventually cast out. The name Ishmael, Yishmael, meaning God will hear, is an echo of the verse that declares God heard her cries, and when she opened her eyes, she saw the well which would restore her strength and her dignity. As my colleague Rabbi Larry Bach teaches, feeling alienated is part of the human condition. However, God is always listening. And God will be there if we are able to hear that voice and open our eyes to God's presence. Jews have been alienated and outcast for our entire history. And in our most desperate moments, we cry out to God. Most of us have felt alienated, alone, and outcast at some point in our lives. Tears filled our eyes as we hoped and prayed for the situation to change. We didn't fit in during high school or college. The lived values in our workplace didn't, ma didn't match our expectations. We were forced to hide our true identity out of fear of being targeted, isolated, or estranged. In time, God willing, our eyes were opened and we found an authentic community that valued us, wanted us, included us, and saw us. We found our place, and we found our people. Finding our place and finding our people can take time. Sometimes we feel at home from the moment we cross a threshold. Other times we feel alienated and never return. Our son Ezra, is finding his way as a newly arrived first-year student at the University of Oregon. He moved into his dorm just this last Thursday, went to Shabbat services at Hillel on Friday, and last night, for the first time in his life, he went to Rosh Hashanah services as just Ezra, not the rabbi's son. <laughs> Avi, your time will come. <laughs> so far, Hillel has done a great job of making him feel welcomed and included. He's finding his place and he's finding his people and is feeling at home. He is fortunate. Some students are having a harder time. A post on the Oregon parents' Facebook page broke my heart. A worried mom wrote as she was leaving her daughter, melancholy has set in, watching my daughter walk to her dorm, not having a friend on campus yet. It was only two days but how heart-wrenching for a mom to watch her daughter struggle already. We find our place when we are welcomed warmly into community and connect with others who, too, are seeking something similar. However, we can be alienated just as easily. I shared a story last year about a longtime member who resigned from her synagogue. She had been very active and went to many programs. However, she had a hard time making friends and connections. When asked by her rabbi why she left, she told him, I came to everything, and I met nobody. In her experience, the synagogue had great programs, but not great people. 
She was a synagogue regular who felt so alienated and alone that she stopped coming. That conversation motivated the rabbi to do some serious soul searching, a cheshbon hanefesh, and to make changes so that this would not happen again. These days of awe expect us to perform an annual cheshbon hanefesh, a thorough examination of the past year. We look inward and assess what we have done well and what we could have done better. We make commitments to improve ourselves in the year ahead. A cheshbon hanefesh should also be performed by our community to help us grow and improve. The focus group meetings that we held in the spring and summer, and one more that we'll hold on Yom Kippur afternoon, ask questions about community and help us examine what we are doing well and what we need to do better. We are at our best when Shirami feels like home, and when we aren't, it can feel alienating. For some, Shirami has always felt very inclusive and supportive. We've been here for you in times of joy and sorrow, and have nurtured you throughout the years. We also learned that at times our congregation can feel cold, cliquish, and alienating. Religious school parents have told me their children have had a hard time making friends because they didn't go to our preschool, like so many of their classmates. One empty nester couple who joined and left within a year told me that they did not feel a sense of community. They came to services occasionally, sat by themselves, and were rarely greeted except by Cantor Kolbrenner and me. My wife Karen attended a program during our first year here. She didn't know anybody, and nobody introduced themselves to her. Nobody invited her to sit with her. Eventually, she asked if she could join a table where there was an empty seat. She told me that if I wasn't the rabbi, it would have been her last event. Helping people feel included is our collective responsibility, especially to those of us for whom Shirami feels like home. We must do better. We must create connections and break down barriers, real and perceived, to full acceptance and inclusion. Our Friday night services often begin the same way ours did this morning. Behold how good it is to be together. This verse helps set the mood for communal worship. It reminds us that when we sit and sing together, we become one. This unity, however, can fade quickly once the service ends and we go to the oneg. We gravitate towards our friends and a newcomer may feel uncomfortable if they don't know anyone or are shy. Looking in from the outside may feel intimidating and they may leave having not met anyone. And here's my ask of you, especially those who come regularly on Friday night. Before joining your friends, approach one or two people you don't know. Introduce them. Introduce yourself. Invite them to join your group. And even if they decline the offer, even if they say, oh, I'm fine just sitting here by myself, you have done the work by being welcome and inclusive. The simple act of saying hello could radically improve our sense of community. We crave authentic community. Research shows that making friends later in life is much harder. Research also shows that more adults have fewer friends today than they had before the pandemic, and that people are much lonelier today and crave genuine face-to-face -face connections that online communities just cannot fully provide. Research tells us all of these things, and yet many of, this, many of us know this already from our own lived experiences. Craving connection that we have missed for the past two and a half years, we are returning to the synagogue. And now is the time to harness this yearning and create new opportunities to help open circles, deepen relationships, and strengthen our community. Developing meaningful relationships, especially as we age, is hard. It requires us to be social, assertive, and vulnerable. Not easy if you're an introvert. However, when people come together regularly, bound by a common interest, when we extend a welcoming hand, familiar faces become acquaintances, and acquaintances can become friends. This is more likely to develop 
in smaller group settings than in large programs, such as a Rosh Hashanah morning service. And this is why we are implementing an initiative to create small groups that will help build community and relationships, six to eight people at, at a time. Now, small groups is not a new idea. Ron Wolfson, a Jewish thought leader and educator who coined the term relational Judaism, consistently preaches the importance of small groups as a way to create communities of greater meaning. Wolfson has been inspired by the work of Pastor Rick Warren of Saddleback Church in Orange County, California, who more than a generation ago published a book called The Purpose Driven Church, The Purpose Driven Church, whose title says it all. Now, what is the purpose of a synagogue? On a functional level, it is to provide a wide range of services and programs. And this is how synagogues have generally operated for generations. However, the synagogue of today much, must be much more than services and programs. It must be relational. Wolfson reminds us that it's not about the programs, it's about the people. And this is how Pastor Rick Warren grew his church from a gathering of 250 to 20,000 people every single week. Pastor Warren's organizing principle is rooted in cultivating relationships through small groups. When a person joins Saddleback, they are placed into an intentional group of five to 10 people who often live in the same neighborhood or who are part of the same demographic. They meet, week they meet weekly as a small group in people's homes or offices for prayer and Bible study. And then on Sunday, they go to church. Saddleback is the hub for these, for these scattered small groups. And the relationships developed in these small groups foster a deeper commitment to this megachurch whose essence remains its thousands of small groups. Now, I believe that some of Saddleback's core organizing principles of bringing small groups together who share a common bond, be it a group of new empty nesters, who sh uh, first time parents, or those who are grieving the loss of a parent or a spouse, to name a few, these are relatable to our community. People want to come together regularly to do meaningful and important things together, to think deeply about our lives and experiences, to learn and to connect with others. This is the power of a small group. People cross the threshold as strangers, but over time become acquaintances and eventually true friends. When you come to a large program or gathering, it may be difficult to find your people, and you may feel peripheral. However, if we know more about who you are and what you need to feel connected, a small group who, of those who share a common affinity or are in a similar stage of life could help remedy that sense of alienation just a bit. And this is how small groups will help to make us more inclusive and enable us to cultivate deeper relationships with one another. Community may be created even from roots of alienation. Hagar and Ishmael survived and thrived as he, Ishmael, became the father of, great, of a great nation. And it can be created from the source of inclusion as Oregon Hillel continues to create opportunities for its students to connect meaningfully. We have an opportunity and a responsibility that goes well beyond the staff and board to provide easier entry points into our community especially for those who may feel uncertain or who may have felt alienated before, here, or elsewhere. It takes all of us, especially those who see Shira Me as a second home, to extend a welcoming hand, an invitation to enlarge a circle, and to form meaningful and sacred community. And in time, strangers may become acquaintances, and acquaintances may become true friends. Can you hear own? May it be God's will.
So we now continue, as we come towards the end of our service, with a series of shofar blasts. We'll be doing one of the series of sounds from the shofar oats section. We'll do the full series this afternoon at the park. But it's a great pleasure to invite our Cantor Emeritus, Mark Elson, to be our shofar sounder this year. It is wonderful, Cantor Elson, to have you back here on the Bima. I hope that you have prepared. I know it's been a while since you've sounded with us. <laughs> And we also hope, we know that many of you have looked forward to having sort of the cacophony of shofar oats sounding from all throughout the sanctuary. We decided, at least for this year at least, because of COVID of course, that we would want to keep one shofar here on the bima and we'll do with the full sounds outside. On page 278. According to Rabbah, the Holy One said, on Rosh Hashanah, recite before me words of Malchuyot, sovereignty, Zichronot, remembrance, and Shofarot, sovereignty, so that you may acknowledge me as ruler over you, remembrance, so that the remembrances of you may rise up favorably before me. And how shall all of this be accomplished? Through the sounds of the Shofar. on page 282. You revealed your glory, a presence in a cloud, and a people became holy when you spoke with them. Amid thunder and lightning, you made yourself known with the blasting shofar you appeared. Let's read together. God, revealed to us and to our fathers and mothers before us, God of revelation, play the song of our freedom on the great shofar. Let your banner fly over the gathering of our exiles. Bring back the dispersed. Let those who are scattered find their way home. Let the joyful songs of Zion greet us in Jerusalem, your holy city, our place of our people's eternal happiness. On page 284. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Shevarim Jerua Takia Takia Shevarim Takia Takia Teruwa Tekiagadola <laughs> the guy still got it. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> sure you do.
It's my pleasure to invite Ellie Short, our synagogue president, to offer a few words of greeting and some announcements. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. And welcome to those who are joining us online. It's so wonderful to see so many faces here, people that I haven't seen for a long time. It's, it's great. Um, thank you so much to our clergy, Rabbi Briskin, Rabbi Goldberg, Canner. Thank you to our ritual committee. Thank you to our greeters, who many of our board of directors here today. Thank you to everyone in our office and our maintenance staff. Together, you've helped create a beautiful service. Canner Colbrenner, your voice is just beautiful. Thank you so much. Eric Schnitzer, thank you. Pam Lynn, you lead our choir so joyfully. You couldn't see her expression, but she was just uplifted us. And that's maybe why our choir, one of the reasons they just sound so wonderful. It's so great to see you here, choir. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our sponsors of treats you can receive as you exit today from our service. This afternoon, looks like it's gonna be a nice day, so spend the time with us in Tyler State Park. At 1.30 is an interactive family service at the Boardwalk Picnic area in the park, and there will be separate programming for children and parents. Chauffeur sounding, I don't know if we can match Canner Elson here with his <laughs> shofar, but there will be chauffeur sounding at 2.45 at the same spot, followed by Toshley, uh, at 3.15 on the bridge near the dam where the boat, um, where the boathouse is. You know, Toshley's when I get a chance to throw our sins away and feed the fishes, so. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, adult learning will be here in Shalom Hall or over Zoom at 9.30. Join Bra Rabbi Briskin for a Rosh Hashanah Day walk. You can't hear me? <laughs> Sorry, I can talk myself. <laughs> um, we're going to be picking apples at Steyer Orchard, and this is a good chance to be wearing our Shirami to Kololom t-shirts. If you f forget all that already, you couldn't hear anything I said, just check the website for the times, please. <laughs> Next Friday evening on September 30th, Shabbat Shuvah, join us for services here or online. At 7 o'clock, we'll be dedicating our new yard site plaques. Also look for information about our lifelong pro programs coming this year. There's a wide variety of things. We will be focusing on Israel. It's Israel's 75th birthday. And we'll be talking from any, everything from books to movies. The popular Shear Me Record Club will be returning. There'll be sessions on current topics, looking at things through a Jewish lens. A few public service announcements. We're kicking off our high holiday drive. Our goal this year is 15,000 pounds of food. We're going to need everybody's help. To achieve that, please accept donations up till October 31st. That's our big sorting day. Monetary contributions are also accepted. Shermi is also conducting a winter clothing drive. We're looking for newer, gently worn clothing like men's, women's, and children's coats, gloves, etc. It will be donated the clothes to the Jewish Family and Children's Services and collected through November 30th. And I finally just want to remind you to order grocery cards. That's how you can support Sarah Me, and not at any expense to yourself. Through all ordering cards, Donna DeSantis is our leader in this. The delivery order date, no, the order date is this Saturday, October 1st at noon, and the, your grocery card will be delivered to you at your home on Sunday, and they will also pick up your items for the food drive. Rabbi, I do want to thank you also for your words of how we should be welcoming. I think that's so important. Please, let's all make that resolution to be warm and welcoming to everybody in our community. So on the behalf of the Board of Directors, I wish all of you a very happy, healthy New Year. One last announcement. Um, this is probably more people that we've had in the building in a while, which means the parking lot here is going to be very full. 
So we encourage everyone to really summon that sense of patience, <laughs> of calm, of tranquility. Above all, be a merge mensch. <laughs> we also know that uh, we did our best. The services ran a little bit longer today, so we know that the time between now and the family program over at Tyler is a little bit short. So we'll just, uh, you know, maybe we'll like, you know, start like a few minutes. We'll kind of, won't have a, a you know, we won't have like my 1.30 start time, which I love to be on time. <laughs> but we'll just kind of, you know, make our way over there. So hopefully we'll see you there this afternoon. Come whenever you can also for a shofar, group shofar sounding. If you own a shofar or something, just please feel free to bring it. It's uh, for everyone. And then Tosh Sheikh, of course. Our concluding prayers begin on page 287 with Alenu. This is a slightly alternate version, so I invite you to pay close attention to the words and please rise. Amenu le shabeach la don hakol La take du la liot sebre shit Shehu asanu le shomre hadama Vehu samanu le shliche hatara Shehu sam chayinu itam Vegor alinu im kol haolam Vanachnu korim umishtachavim umodim Lifne melech malche hamlachim hakadosh parachu Mayom ha'hu Yihye Adonai echad Ushemo echad On page 291. There are stars up above so far away we only see their light long, long after the star itself is gone. And so it is with people that we loved. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us. As we live our days, these are the ways we remember. And so we open our hearts to those that we've lost in this, this season and years past, or even in recent days. As so we join together in reciting Kaddish at home, the Mourner's Kaddish. On page 292. Yitgadal vid kadash shemei rabah, v'al ma divrach hirute v'am lich machute, v'chaye chon v'yom echon, v'chaye dechol beit Yisrael, v'agalal v'zman kari v'imru amen, yehe shemei rabah mevorach le'alam v'lamei almaya, yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh, V'yitadar v'yitale v'yitalal shemei d'kudasha b'richu L'eila u'l'eila min kol b'rchata v'shirata Tush v'chata v'nechemata D'amiran v'elma v'imru amen Yehei shlama rabba min shemaya V'chaim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen O'se shalom v'mromav hu ya'ase shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, ve'al kol Yoshei Tevel, ve'imru, amen. May the source of peace bestow peace on all who mourn, and may we be a source of comfort to all who are bereaved. Amen. with a new year. Uh-huh.
Lashana tova tekatevu vetechatemu. May be inscribed and sealed for a good year. Shana tova. Nice done. Shana tova. Work to you. Sorry that we are. Uh...